Welcome, my friends. Breaking news today. Breaking news about your health and your hair. A surprising new study is linking hair dye and chemical straighteners to cancer, especially breast cancer. Women all over the globe are panicked, and they're seriously questioning whether these products can affect their health. Worse yet, the study found an even more alarming disparity. The increased risk of breast cancer was significantly higher in black women. For many women, hair color and style are significant components of identity. I get it. So he invited women who dye their hair to the studio for a salon talk. We've got a hair expert, Curly Nikki Walton. She's there. She'll chaperone us. And via Zoom, we're live in salons all over the country. Now, I want to share the information, get your questions. And to kick it all off, I've got family practitioner Jen Caudill. Dr. Call did a deep dive into this study. So... What did we find out about the chemical ingredients in these hair products and what they can do to a woman's health? Right, so we know that hair care products have thousands of chemicals in them. Um, and interestingly enough, that we, we know some of these hair care products actually have carcinogens that may impact breast cancer risk, may have um, endocrine disruptors. These are chemicals called endocrine disruptors. And we know that black hair products may have more um, sort of hormonally active uh, chemicals than other hair care products. There's a lot of stuff going on here, a lot of stuff that we need to look into. How much does the racial disparity concern you? Let me just be honest with you. It concerns me a lot. As a black woman who, honestly, I straighten my hair, I dye my hair. When I read this study, I was actually blown out of the water and quite concerned, quite honestly, um, and shocked, to be honest with you. The, the researchers in the study really wanted to understand if there was a connection between the use of chemical straighteners and hair dyes and breast cancer risk. They looked at over 46,000 women over a mean of 8.3 years or so. What they found was that in white women uh, who used permanent hair dye, white women had a 7% increased risk of breast cancer, but in black women, Black women had an increased risk of breast cancer of 45% if they used permanent hair. Oh dye. my goodness. 45%. And, and this blows my mind. Oh. Now look, I have to say though, this was not a cause and effect study. This is a study that, that shows an association, so we can't prove cause and effect here. But honestly, I've said this before, I say it again, I'm very passionate. I'm a black woman who does these things to my hair very regularly. Um, this for me is cause for concern and cause for us to really look further into this. Very important. Yeah, six to seven times higher chance. So come yes. on over. We actually got the authors of the study via Zoom. Dale Sanders is a PhD there. She is Dr. Sander. So what exactly does the study tell us about hair dye and breast cancer? So um, this is exactly correct. If there are thousands of chemicals in the hair dyes and, and chemical straighteners, and some of them do, um, are, do cause potential concern for cancer risk. The association with permanent dye differed by race with about a 7% higher increase in the relative risk for white women and a 45% increase in risk for the black women. The association with chemical straighteners, though, didn't vary by race, which was um, reassuring in some regard, because, um, but what we do know is that black women are much more likely to use these products than white women. Dr. Sandler, thank you very much. So women You're everywhere, welcome. everywhere have been asking lots of concerning questions since the study was released. Let's get to the salon goers. You're all sitting here patiently waiting. So Karen, this hit home for you, I understand. Yes, it does, Dr. Oz. I'm a breast cancer uh, survivor, and I'm also the mom of seven-year-old twins. And so uh, before I got cancer, I dyed my hair religiously every four weeks. Um, but having breast cancer uh, has really made me think about what's important, and that's my family. And if modifying my hair regimen in any way can help me stay around, I want to do it. Nothing's more important than being with those seven-year-old twins, though. Yeah. Yes, Thomas and Sienna, my loves, and my <laughs> husband, John. Yeah, they don't care about your hair color, which we'll come back yes. to in a second. So, Nikki, from a hair perspective, what, what does this mean for us? What stood out about the study? So, for me, to see that black women were the least likely to use permanent hair dyes, they were also, like, more significantly um, affected by breast cancer, like, tremendously so. And that's a concern because for all the markets, like in the world, the hair care market is the most racially segregated, mm -hmm. and the products that are marketed and manufactured for black women can vary drastically for the ones that are marketed and manufactured for white women and other groups. So these ingredients sometimes can be carcinogenic, mutagenic, and endocrine disrupting, and that is a major concern. So hairstylist Deanna in Fort Myers has a question for us. Take it away. Dr. Cuddle, uh, my question is, if my clients have a family history of breast cancer, is it more dangerous for me to use hair dye? 
That's a really, really great question. Um, so this particular study looked at uh, women who had sisters who had breast cancer, but it didn't particularly look at, say, um, the connection between breast cancer risk and hair dye and women with the BRCA gene, breast cancer gene, or women of average risk. So we still have some questions in the department. We still need more research. We don't quite have the answers to that specific question yet. Tiffany, you've got a question for us. Yes, so Nikki, does it really matter if you use box dye or salon dye? So the study didn't really flag a difference there, and it's mainly because there are some ingredients that are in box dyes that are in salon dyes. So it's the ingredients that is the concern. Okay. As you're coming over here, Dr. Carl joined us also. I want to go through that. It's a good, important question, Tiffany. Let's look at the list of ingredients in permanent hair dyes. And yes. Again, this is not like food additives. You're not supposed to recognize all these names, but this no. is still a <laughs> lot of complicated names. Exactly. These are 10 ingredients commonly found in hair dyes that are marketed to white women. And I want to compare them to 10 ingredients commonly found in hair products for black men. If you don't mind, these are, again, a lot of complicated. The only thing that I recognize is water. water. Yeah. <laughs> and propylene glycol. That's one that's in almost every hair care product. But, but look at these three products here, right? Big, big long, complicated chemical names. Now, yes. this is a typical uh, hair uh, box hair product for yes. white women. I'm going to show you what a black woman's hair products might look like in terms of their ingredients. And what do you all notice? As you can see, there's overlap but there's a huge difference. These are the three that were flagged by the study, and in the products that are marketed to black women, they're usually found in a higher concentration. Black products often have more endocrine disruptors than the white products um, for hair dye, and these are just some of the examples. So on the surface, the study, I think, is sort of frightening for me. What, what are your yeah. thoughts? Honestly, as a black woman myself, who colors her hair, who straightens her hair, I, I have to be honest with you, I'm concerned. I really am. However, this is what I would say. We need more information, but for right now, I think it's wise to be mindful of the hair products that we're using. Thank you for the advice. T to your point, Nick is sticking around, because when we come back, what are the safer dye alternatives, plus the questions from salon professionals that you don't want to miss.